All right, everybody, it's Ollie from Flight Comp, and it's the moment you've all been waiting for in the Prestige series where we take a look at the fuselage and tails. And here it is, right here the Pike Prestige 2PK fuselage. Scan back. Look at the size of that pylon. We finally have a tall pylon from Samba. And then we have the rest of the fuse. The area where the rudder plugs in. If you guys have flown Perfections or Dynamics, you'd be very familiar with this setup back here on the pylon. It's basically the same setup as the Dynamic and Perfection in the way that the elevator attaches with a ball link and a brass rod that accepts a steel pin that's on the elevator. Then we have the super interesting part. Top of the fuselage, under the wing. We have some pockets where the servos go. Recess for a multiplex connector. And then re this recess back here uh, it's hard to see, but that's for a receiver. Then obviously the two wing bolts. The nose. Canopy there. This is a two-piece fuselage, so it splits right here. Now have you ever seen a more sexy, streamlined fuselage in your life? Well, I have on most models because this thing isn't very sexy or streamlined at all seems to have just a very utilitarian design but you know what they say looks aren't the most important thing it's what's on the inside and let's reserve judgment until we fly this bad boy because it just might have an awesome personality that you won't be able to live without there she is. And over here, the world's stubbiest sailplane elevator. And it's not backwards. This is the front. This is the back. So this is the moving part. Right there. doesn't match the wing shape in any way. This elevator is very short and stubby. And but again, I'm sure Philip Kolb uh, had a purpose in mind when he designed it. So let's reserve judgment till the day of the, of the maiden flight. And then I have my rudder in here. And this awesome pinkish color, which I picked out myself. Here's the rudder. Both these parts are a solid core. And we have the typical Samba ball link arrangement. And that's the part where it plugs into the elevator, or to the, I'm sorry, to the fuselage. And so the idea here is you just slide this on, snap in the ball link, and then just use some, I guess use some tape to hold it on. Uh, there's a slot, which is hard to see. Right there, that's a pass through for the rudder push rod and ball link. And then let's look at the front here. So this is actually a two piece fuselage and they split it in front of the wing. So your servos and receiver uh, would all go back here and then in the, the nose you'd have your motor speed control battery and uh, Potentially your Altus, so you'd have, I guess, your uh, ESC um, and maybe BEC connector to plug in when you plug the nose on. Now, this section of the fuselage here is a uh, constant uh, cross-section. 
that is that it's basically the same cross section from here to here and the idea is you can cut this fuselage to adjust whatever CG you might need and I don't know how important that would be on a light model like this but I can imagine on a heavier model, a strong model where you have a really heavy motor and maybe a bigger battery you could cut this to tailor it to your CG but we'll see, uh, obviously we'll build it out first and then see if we need to uh, cut this shorter to get the CG that we want, um, although I don't even have any idea right now what the CG should be. But let's go ahead and start working on this guy. Uh, I think I'm going to start with trying to get the servos in and uh, hooking up the push rods. And yeah, kind of perplexed. I don't know if the horns point up or they point down. But let's just uh, get into it and see what we can figure out. All right, I am uh, sorting out how to get the servos installed and the prestige. Um, here are the pockets. I've cut some slots in for the servo arms to go down. The push rods are underneath this platform. Carbon fiber push rods. Um, I'm using these Bluebird 115s which are really just spectacular servos but these slots were made for um, MKS servos, the 6100s and the Bluebirds are about half a millimeter bigger in dimension so I had to just file a little bit off the edges here to get the servos to fit um, again I cut the slots here For the arms, I might have to do more work on those, I'm not sure yet. And then these little uh, dimples here are just for the uh, servo pigtails to get some more clearance there. Now I'm a little concerned because um, we're going to have to use pretty long arms, pretty long servo arms. Uh, this was just on here, uh, um, it, it's too short. But uh, we're going to need a couple of long arms and I'm concerned that the tails themselves uh, with the long arms, well, how can I how can I, how can I put it? Um, I think the tails, especially the rudder, because the uh, horn is so short, would really need a short servo arm to get the most resolution out of the servo, and we're gonna have to put a long servo arm on here just to get clearance past this plate and to put the clevis on. Um, so we might end up with our servo not moving a whole lot and the rudder moving a ton. Uh, the elevator's got a pretty long horn on it, so that actually might like a uh, long servo arm. But this elevator's so huge that I don't think it's going to need to move that much, you know, to get the right uh, control authority. But anyway, you have to put long arms on here to get everything to work so let's move ahead with uh, getting these servos uh, in place and hooking up the controls. Let's get this uh, elevator push rod hooked up. Um, I have the elevator on the pylon and I've taped it in the neutral position so it won't move and then if we move over to where the servo is get the servo just in place and what I'm gonna do is you can see the carbon push rod in there. Um, I'm just going to hold the servo in place without the horn on it. This is the horn I'm going to use. You can see it's pretty long and then a clevis and coupler that came with the kit. But what I'm going to do is I got this uh, like toothpick uh, meat skewer thing and I'm going to put the servo in here. And I'm just going to come over, I'm going to dip the end of this in some uh, paint, some white or silver paint. And then I'm just going to come right over the top of the output shaft in the middle and go straight down and put a dot on the carbon fiber push rod. Let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to pull the push rod out of the back of the model. Alright, I pulled the push rod out and we have the uh, servo arm and clevis and everything right here and you can see the uh, paint mark and that's 
where this would go align with the pin in the clevis. And what we're going to want to do is put another mark on the push rod where it would go into the coupler. And that's the point where we're going to cut. Okay, so I have the second um, mark on the push rod. And I'm just going to cut that and then scuff up the push rod a little bit and scuff up the uh, threaded coupler. And then we're going to see about putting the push rod back in the fuselage and somehow attaching the coupler to the push rod and getting everything in place. Started working on the uh, rudder or the vertical stabilizer. Um, just doing some test fitting and this was a really tight fit on this part of the fuselage here. Um, basically it wasn't seating down all the way. And you want to be careful really because, you know, if you start grabbing on this thing and shoving it on the boom, you're just going to dent it up. I already put a dent in it right there. You can see that. There's my thumbprint right there. Um, bare, and I wasn't even putting any pressure on it, man. I was just trying to get it on here very lightly and gingerly, and I put a dent in it. I guess that's what we get these days for having uber light F5J models. But anyway, what I did to make it fit better, I did some wet sanding on here with 600 grit sandpaper. And then I filed down the seam a little bit. There was a little step there. So I filed that down and just basically kept sanding and fitting. And uh, most of the friction was at the end here. And then I um, also did some wet sanding on the inside of this a little bit just by rolling up some sandpaper and twirling it around in there. And then the other thing I did was I cleaned up this opening for the ball link with a, a round file. So just kind of going in here and cleaning this up. So I actually attached everything and it was the rudder was super tight. Um, let me show you the push rod. So there's the rudder push rod. I glued the uh, ball link on. And then I test fit everything, and uh, you know, it was just binding up like crazy. Um, I have a feeling also that uh, I might have to cut the rest of the slot out. Um, I think the ball link rubs on this right here. Now, one trick I did was I drilled a hole. If you can see it. I drilled a tiny hole through the ball link. Let me get a piece of wire and I'll show you. So this is what I meant. There's my ball link. And I stole this idea from um, the Optimus. That's about a one millimeter hole. And so what happens is when this is on the rudder, I can just insert the steel rod and just rotate this and snap this off really easy, easily rather than trying to... Um, get a screwdriver or my finger under here and destroying the rudder trying to take this off. So there's another quick tip. Um, I'm going to reassemble this stuff and see if my rudder is moving any freer. Alright, well I have the vertical fitting on the boom well. I did some cleanup work here. I've snapped the ball link on and the rudder is not working at all. I don't think it's binding on the top there. I think it's binding on the fuselage boom. So I'm going to start cutting back that little tab we had left over. And uh, man, I think I'm going to have to end up just cutting it off. But uh, let me show you how this works here. So I'm just going to put this steel rod in like this. Just slide it through. And then we can just twirl it. And that just pops the the ball link right off and you don't have to uh, mess up your parts trying to remove it so if I line up the fuselage with the rudder uh, you can see that ball link falls right <clears throat> over that slot or over that tab and that tells me that the that ball link is going to hit the end of the fuselage and get snagged and uh, I think we're going to have to cut that guy off. So uh, let's see if cutting that off makes us any better. 
Okay, I cut this uh, little tab out here and sort of opened up the back a little bit and rounded these off just in the hopes that it's uh, less chance of that ball link snagging up on something. So let's reassemble it and see if I actually get the rudder to move. Success! We have a nice free moving rudder. Um, so that little tab was the trick, cutting that thing off. Um, plenty of throw that way. Not a whole lot of throw that way. I mean, it's definitely enough. That's a big rudder. I kind of like to use the rudder a lot. So I think I'm going to have to file in here a little more. Open that up just a tad more. And we should be able to get a little more throw in this direction. And that will be good. So I'm going to do that. And now that I have the ball uh, link attached here, I can go to the other end and um, cut the, the push rod for the servo. And then what I'm going to do is glue on both the couplers and move on. Okay, so we're um, going to try to glue these clevises and couplers to the carbon push rods and the fuse. I've attached the uh, servo arms. This is the elevator, that's the rudder. The rudder I made is slightly shorter. I'm hoping that'll work out okay. And then I'm going to use some JB weld here that I've mixed up. And I have a T-pin just to help me apply the JB weld inside the couplers. I have, I'm going to still use the stick to try to get the JB weld on the carbon. And this is going to be really tricky because I'm going to have to grab these with these hemostats and then try to go in through here and stick them on the um, carbon push rods. And I have a feeling it's going to be a bit, a bit of a hard time, but we'll see how it goes. So I managed to get these couplers in place. Um, I have these carbon uh, trimmings from the push rods just kind of prying the uh, push rods off the sides of the fuselage so they don't stick. Can't really see anything, it's too dark, but needless to say, a bit of a struggle, a bit of a struggle. But I got it done and I'm just going to let this dry overnight and then I'll show you how it looks. Uh, in the daylight and when the uh, JB weld is cured. Alright, well the uh, JB weld is dry on my couplers. I don't know if you can see this, but I have uh, the horns and clevises and everything in there. And this is what it looks like from up top. Just rotated the horns, horns up and pulled them through the uh, slots. And now I'm going to try to get the servos in and hook up the tails and see if my control surfaces are still neutral. I don't know, uh, hopefully nothing moved. All right, well, just about ready to get the um, servos installed here permanently. Um, I cut a channel right here for the servo wires to go through this area and then exit the receiver space. And not sure if this was the right technique but uh, I cut a really big hole here um, for the wiring harness wires and the elevator servo and the throttle uh, uh, throttle uh, ESC wires and Altus and all that stuff, uh, rudder elevator wires, all the wires to come through here. There is a hole at the bottom here, um, but I was thinking that if I pass the wires through that hole, um, A, the receiver right here would, would probably no longer sit flush because obviously the wires would come up then have to wrap around and I don't, I don't think it would sit flush. And B, there's actually a, um, man, it's really hard to hold. So there's a... Right in here, there's a carbon uh, box section, and it's actually the receptacle for the ballast plates. So, you know, if I had wire coming down here, then underneath coming through here, uh, I'm pretty sure that the ballast would start hitting it every time I wanted to put the ballast in and out. So I think this is the best way to go. And there's a ton of material in here, um, just a ton of material. So it should still be plenty strong enough. 
But again, you know, it's the first time I'm doing this. I uh, could be doing it wrong. Don't know. Not much info out there on this yet. Um, anyway, so I'm going to bolt, actually bolt down the servos, get these arms, servo arms hooked up and screwed in and pass the wire through here. And that'll pretty much complete the uh, back end of this fuselage. Oh, I'll also um, glue the uh, connector in for the uh, wiring harness here, the wing connector. All right, check this out, guys. This is the uh, brass piece that uh, is basically the elevator horn. That ball snaps into the push rod. And I'm going to modify this a little bit. You see right here, there's a very sharp lip on that ball link. And what can happen is, as this is going back and forth, if you go full up, it can basically come out of the slot in the fuselage. And then if it moves a little bit, that sharp lip will come back down on the edge of the fuselage and get stuck. And you'll be stuck with full up elevator. Now, I've actually seen this happen to a Pike Perfection, so I've been doing this little trick on most of my Samba planes since. And what I'm going to do is just uh, round off that edge <clears throat> so it uh, doesn't have a sharp edge and it won't catch. And then also, of course, you want to um, open up the slot a little bit to make sure everything goes smoothly and doesn't rub. You want to do that as well. And I've already done that, but at full up elevator, that horn still kind of rides up over here and catches on the ledge. So I'm going to file this a little bit more. I don't want to make it too big. So I've put this brass horn in my drill, my cordless drill. And I didn't tighten it up too much. I just barely tightened it because that's a hollow piece of brass. And if you really start tightening it, you're going to crush it. So just barely snug is good. And then you're, all you're going to do is hold down the trigger and get yourself a file. And we're going to come in and basically knock off that edge with the file. All right, have a look at that now. Rounded off that shoulder nicely. So basically now, there's a much reduced chance that this is going to hang up on us. So this in conjunction with working on the slot at the back of the fuse is going to ensure we have trouble-free elevator operation. Okay, so let's test out our servos here. Um, I have my servo tester here and have a little bit of information. Um, this is the max throws on our servos, so we have 60 degrees total um, deflection each way, and um, this is the center point here. Now, I've made some notes, and we'll start with the rudder first. If I go back here, we can move the rudder through its full deflections, and... We're getting to 1700 this way at max deflection and 1300 this way at max deflection, which after doing some math translates to 30%. So with the shortest horn possible, we're using 30% of the servos available travel to get full deflection, which honestly is pretty terrible because we have just lost a ton of resolution and power with the setup. So when we put in sub trim, it's going to translate to really big movements on the rudder. We might experience double centering and we're basically using less than half of the servos um, available torque. Now let's go to the elevator. So I have the elevator plugged in. Okay, and with the elevator, 
On this side we're going to 1900, and on this side we're going to 1260, which translates to 45% here and 55% here. So even with the elevator, we really need a shorter arm. Now I probably could have gone one hole smaller on the elevator, and I think this would have got us up into the 70s here and the 60s here, which I would consider to be in an acceptable range. Really, it goes to show you how important um, your linkage geometry is. And I think when manufacturers are designing new models, they should take that into account. You know, why would you go, let's say you go and spend uh, theoretically $100 on brand Y of servo, which is supposedly the best servo available, blah, blah, blah. And you put it in the rudder here, and you're basically going to get the torque and resolution of, of a $10 servo out of that servo. So, kind of leads you scratching your head a little bit, but there's literally nothing we can do. I could change the elevator horn and make it a little better, and I'll probably do that. The rudder is as, as short as it's going to get, basically. I don't think I could make that horn any shorter. So we'll just build the model and, and fly it and see how it goes. Maybe you won't even notice it, but I do have a feeling that we're going to have a somewhat notchy feeling rudder, which I use the rudder a lot, so kind of disheartening. But anyway, the servos are fully installed. We have the uh, harness in place. We have the wires coming out of this hole here. Um, the tail is all done completely. Everything moves freely with no binding. Uh, oh, the other thing I got to do is I got to have some um, exits back here. Maybe something like here and here for the antenna wires on the JR receiver. So we're going to have to route the antenna wires outside of the fuselage. And I'm thinking about putting a satellite um, up front. Maybe having the antenna coming out right here or something. I don't know. We'll see how this looks back here first and then move on. All right, people. This uh, prestige fuselage is proving to be quite tricky. Got my wires routed. I've bound my receiver to my trusty JR28X radio. And now I'm trying to route these wires back here out of the boom. And you can see there's not a whole lot of room. Once I get this seated in, the back of the receiver is basically butted up against this wall. So fishing these antennas in here and getting them out of these holes. Ah, not too easy, not too easy. I have 3D printed up some sexy little antenna exits Let's see here there you go printed up a bunch of these hoping to be able to use them and hoping to be able to stick on some of these uh, retract air airline tubing covers over the ends of the antenna Unfortunately, I don't think if I manage to get these sticking out of the fuse that I'll be able to pull them in again to transport the fuselage. So they might be sticking out permanently. But I'm going to keep cracking on this and hopefully I'll be able to uh, get all this stuff situated. Alright people, I uh, managed to get the receiver in. And after a bunch of messing around, I got my antennas out of the fuselage with my handy 3D printed exits. So that's what she looks like. I must say it's a very clean install once you get everything in there. It looks really good. Um, boy, if I have to take that receiver out again, it's going to be a pain, man. So maybe not so good for the maintenance or replacing components. You might want to consider trying to use the smallest receiver possible. Maybe a X bus or S bus or something if you have a different brand. And uh, yeah, or uh, 
Actually, taking the case off that receiver would help a little bit, too. But there we go. And then on the front, I just have an extension here, which will be for the speed control. So that's basically the only plug I'll need to plug in. There we go. Um, I think I'm going to wrap this video up here and just call it good. So we have, you know, hooked up the servos. We got the tail sorted out. Um, basically the whole rear end of the fuselage is done. So uh, next video we will get the motor and speed control and an Altus in here and do the programming on the radio. Hopefully that'll be a short video and then we can go fly this thing. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. This is the uh, Pike Prestige 2PK build series and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.